Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Smith. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to improve your mental health. Now, a lot of people uh, know me, know me as Andrea Smith, but a lot of people don't know who I am really and my background. I came to this country um, 1995. I was married, I had two children. The important part of when I started this journey of being a mental health facilitator or a stress coach was 15 years ago, um, I, my marriage broke up. I was left, um, as uh, Rick might know a little bit, but I was left on the other side of the world in New Zealand with two very young children, a four and a half and an eight. At that time, my stress levels was really high. What was I going to do? I was living in a nice house, but I didn't want to be there. Not because I didn't like New Zealand, because I had settled in the UK. I had a job, I had a life. So I needed to then come back here and while I came back here, it was really, really difficult. I had two very young children. I was very stressed. I found that the support for uh, me as a person um, alone was really not there. You could read books, but there wasn't a book to tell you how to cope, how to deal with the stress, how to come out of it. So I went back and I did my uh, degree in clinical hypnosis. Then a couple of year, late, years later, I did cognitive behavior therapy. I am an NLP practitioner. And I worked really, really hard to build myself because I was a registered nurse for 25 years. And I knew what stress could do to people, how it can really impact people on their uh, physical health, how they impact their mental health. And I wanted to make sure that I was there. I knew that I didn't want to go to take tablets and I don't object to people taking medications, but unless you have the support of somebody, you're able to find your way to the other side like I had to, you cannot get anywhere. So I, the talk today is how to improve your mental health and well-being. So you can feel stress sometimes with those overwhelming things, you're not being able to have that balance of your home and work life. You may also have then conflicts, problems in your personal relationship. So the goal of the talk is how to improve your mental health and well-being. I, um, you know, sometimes when you're stressed, you, you're overthinking, you're not focused, you lose that tiny bit of confidence in yourself. You feel very low and depressed and you lack motivation to do things, you procrastinate, you, you, you know, rather watch Netflix or you rather just uh, not think of and push things aside because things that you thought like me weren't just working for me, I didn't know how. So that's how I went back and studied and got my professional qualifications so I could help people find their way through these, this fog of stuff that's going on. So, when you're stressed and you're anxious, you will lose financially and there's a loss of productivity because certain situations can trigger, like the anxiety and panic. You will have sleep problems. I struggled with sleep and insomnia for years till I was able to find a way to cope with my insomnia. You're not able to afford things that you need. You have social and relationship stress. So not being present in your business can reduce your income. And like I said before, you might overthink and might avoid the things to stay on top of your productivity. So I didn't know how many people knew about the stats for mental health in the UK costs a UK employer about 45 billion a year. There's a 16% rise since 2016. One in four people in the UK experience mental health problems. And one in six people report those mental health problems. Do you know why? Because they're afraid because they find it difficult to open up about these mental health problems because you either live a very busy life and you think oh I'll just let it go I'll let it go you don't worry about the people because people might think you're weird years ago I had a, a very very high business owner who ran multiple businesses and he just wanted to keep it on the radar he went for a bike ride and had what he thought was a heart attack but it was actually just a massive panic attack here, all the tests, and they found out nothing was wrong with him. He then came to me and wanted to know how he could deal with the stress. When he walked away, he was happier, but he still did not want 
other people to know that he was having support because it's embarrassing. You know, people will leave you out. You will lose your business. You don't want to be treated differently. Um, my client Elliot said about his mental health struggles. I did not answer the phone. I would not open the door. Dead to death. Um, uh, stacked up. So I just wanted to show you this diagram because most people will uh, come to their business, you know, with the arms and legs. You know, they they go to work. They 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 step into their business eighty percent with the arms and legs, fifteen percent with the arms, legs, and head. But only five percent of people will be present with the arms, their legs, their motivation will driving the business to who they are and where they want to be. And I, for one, I'm sure I want to be among the 5% because I know that having this business, having this strategy will really help me succeed in my goals and the things that I want to do. So um, imagine what it would mean for your business if you took quicker decisions, better decisions. You'd be more present. Your business, imagine the story you could tell. Now, awareness of what's going on with your mental health is your responsibility. So you can relax better at home from work. Now, I just was going to offer people here to book a discovery call. Just call me. Book a 30-minute call with me to improve your mental health. Do something for yourself. You know, even, even just chatting with me will strengthen you. Learn the importance of using stress management techniques in a program like mine, which, you know, uses constructive pausing, guided meditation, breathing exercises. These behavioral changes can be difficult, but therefore having patience will make you feel better. So mental health is important because how often even I, in those terrible times in the past, was just lying down. That's not my image, luckily, <laughs> but um, just was lying down, just with my head buried in the pillow, wondering how I was going to cope, how I was going to get out of bed, take my two children to school, how. And I literally, many pe people don't know here that when I came back to the UK from New Zealand, I had no family. I had no home. I had no parents here. I had no brothers and sisters. I had no one. I just had to find my way through the fog. Fortunately, unfortunately, I found my Dewey and he's been my support ever since. So if you're able to keep in control of your stress, you'll be able to spend more quality time with your family. You'll be able to understand your triggers. You'll cope and find ways to cope during difficult situations. And you'll be better manage your stress and how to support other people. So having important, uh, improving mental health is important because it reduces anxious feelings, improves your mood, helps you think clearly, better sense of calm and inner peace, increases your self-esteem and re reduces the risk of depression. You will see that improvement in your home at work. So this program that I do a full, um, you know, three months program, it teaches people how to get energy in their sleep, in their, uh, in their productivity, create greater confidence, work-life balance, focus, concentration, and performance. So what I wanted to do here was teach you a little technique by the end of my um, uh, presentation is to how to understand stress. Because increased stress will build up those negative emotions. If you take the small steps, you will be able to release those negative emotions, relieve your symptoms, make these steps a part of your daily routine. So you're able to be better manage those emotional responses. Over time, that perception of yourself and the world will change. Your confidence will grow and allow you to live a happier, healthier life. So I call it my three Ps. This little technique, it takes a few minutes in the morning just to do this little technique. It's called art of reframing and I use the three Ps. So my first P is you pause when you know you're feeling stressed or you're feeling overwhelmed of what your day is gonna bring you. Take a deep breath, ask yourself, how am I feeling? What do I want to think and feel? Your ability is important to distance yourself from 
that overwhelm that's coming towards you. Pivot, my second P. So I call that stress or that negative mind chatter your black widow spider. It's something negative saying, I should not think like that. I should not feel like that. It's all those thoughts that overthinking goes around and around in your head. Tell yourself, I see that negativity. I'm going to make a choice to ignore that negative mind chatter, to respond in a positive manner. And my last P is practice purpose. Remember, each of us on this call are unique individuals. We're just unique in our ways. You are special. How you shine right out there, how, in that, how you shine in that dark situation. Talk to somebody, have that support. There's so many of us who are there just to support any of that, you know, dark thoughts that you have. I also did forget to mention that I wrote a book. It's called Fear Less, Live More. It's on the screen. You know, it's available through me or uh, through Amazon, but please, please ask for support. If you're struggling, ask for support if you need some help and talk to somebody. So I just want to throw it out in the room and ask people any questions and I'll put my uh, details on the screen. Thank you. <laughs>